uh, Soul Savers were um, uh, playing with my band Depeche Mode on a, a 2009 tour that we did, and um, they were opening for us a number of shows, and um, which was through a mutual friend that mm -hmm. uh, suge suggested it. It was Martin the Noble, and and it kind of worked out, and. Um, so I'd sit on the side of the stage most nights and watch Mark up there singing, singing the songs um, and, uh, you know, thoroughly enjoyed it. And one night, Rich and I were just, I think, in a hallway before a show. This is Rich Machen. Yeah, Rich Machen and, and half of the, of the team. And um, uh, we were just chatting before a show and started talking about the writing process. And it, it turned out that we had a very sort of similar process in writing and the way that he had written in the past with Mark was very to, similar to the way that I like to write with people and um, so you know we may had that conversation of mm -hmm. like let's do something and now you have those conversations a lot but uh, um, so quite often nothing turns out happening but you know shortly after I'd finished that tour uh, sure enough I got a call from Rich and he said I've got something, uh, you know, I've got something I could send you. And, and uh, are you interested? So I said, send it to me and I'll see if, you know, I'm feeling it and see what happens. And, uh, you know, no strings attached. And it was really like that. And uh, that process continued for about a year. And mm. by the end of that year, we realized we had more than enough for, more than enough for a record. And, and what seemed to be uh, was going to, could 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 possibly be uh, you know a great record. Uh, you know the record is called "The Light, the Dead Sea" and it's out today from Soul Savers, featuring Dave Gahan, my guest, frontman for Depeche Mode, now fronting this uh, duo of Rich Machen and Ian Glover. And um, you had a tough year going into this project: uh, malignant <laughs> tumor removed, a leg injury, <laughs> vocal cords. I mean. Oh yeah, I forgot about the leg. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this, this was not like you know in your youth where maybe you brought your woes upon yourself. Yeah. This was just like stuff happening. Yeah. This was life. That's right. Um, well, you know these things they say you know um, will make you stronger. But um, and I you know I do feel that as well. And I also feel that um, they're constant reminders. You know this. You're human, and you know you're going to have obstacles that you're going to have to climb over, and things that happen in life that are out of your control. And now, you know, uh, they also make, give you their food for thought. You know, they make you think about a lot of stuff: what's important and what's not really important. And the things that you, you know, uh, dwell on that just, uh, you know, really you, sh you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, as I don't know if it comes with age as well, but as as I get a little older and uh, maybe a little bit wiser, um, I'm able to uh, reflect on that stuff more. And that definitely comes out in this music. I think, you know, yeah, it was kind of a tough year, but um, the stuff with my vocals and stuff, that, that's that's uh, that's wear and tear. That's just stuff that's going to happen. Right. If you're, if you're trying to do four or five shows a week for, you know, uh, a year or two, um, you're going to have some problems. But... Um, you know, the other stuff was out of my control and, uh, you know, in lots of ways. But what it did make me do is stop and think and, and stop and try to value what is important. Mm -hmm. So how are you feeling now? I'm feeling great. Um, uh, I have no complaints at all. I have, a, I have an amazing job. I have a, a fantastic family. I make my wife's listening right now. Hi, Jen. <laughs> um, and... Um, you know, there's no, I, I, what can I say? Yeah. I, I get to make music with, uh, you know, this really was a gift for me, this record. I, and, and the way the songs were written uh, really taught me a lot about getting out of my own way. And uh, there's always something there if you just show up, mm. you know. You, know. <laughs> you, you said earlier that uh, music is a learning process, and it seems that that's often the last thing that people learn, is how to get out of their own way. And <laughs> yeah, and music, and, you know, music really is, it's like a gift. It just is floating around now. I really do believe that. Look, that's not to say you've got to put, not got to put some work into mm -hmm, it. You've got mm -hmm. to put some work into it. But, look, without look, Rich, when, when Rich kind of gave me these things, they were gifts. And there was never a moment when he and I had a conversation on, the phone where it's like, right, well, what do you want me to do with this? I don't really know <laughs> what to do. Or what the, there wasn't any of that like, trying to figure it out. It was really just quite pure. And what are you left with? Do you hear this as an album or as a collection of songs? It's definitely an album now. I mean, it started out as a collection of songs, or it started out as a writing, uh, kind of like a, 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 a process of writing and a, 
um, learning from that really um, we didn't sit down and say let's make a record it was just to see if we if we can write some songs together um, and after about five or six pieces that we had done we realized that it was kind of you know okay this is turning into a record and um, got very excited about that um, but it's definitely an album and to me it's an album that I still I'm, I'm still kind of like I want to I have two sides to that album I'm kind of putting you know really kind of uh, do, do you mean literally like an A side yeah, and a B yeah, side yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely Rich and I that's one thing we did discuss we're both big fans of um, gospel and blues music and there's a lot of those influences in this mm -hmm. music um uh, but but we're fans of of like a record where there's like a, you you listen to it. It's got a it begins. It takes you on a little journey, and then and then and you flip the record you, over. <laughs> yeah, and it leaves you in a place of reflection or whatever, and mm. just feeling a sense of hope or like you belong to something. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, David Bowie did that for me. It was like I was you know. Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, I mean, yeah. those records, they just took me to a place. I wanted to go live where he was living, you know. <laughs> <laughs>